starting a new thing. Uh, I'm gonna be uh, doing some streaming. I'll be just doing my online homework stuff. It's a new thing. Bear with me on this. I have a binary thing here. Okay, so the first two bits are going to be borrowed from. And so, and so that means the first one is actually going to be a uh, bracket. Second one is class C, and it's 1.100, and it's not a 0, dot 0, or 255.255, dot two five five. so that one will be a hook. Um, dot 0, and the IP is neither 0 nor 255, so that's also a hook. Class A, it would have to be 10.255.255.255, .255 .255 .255 or 0, 0, 0 in order to be anything other than I. Okay, so forty uh, forty eight and two forty. And so 48 would be okay, so it would be one to forty seven would be the hosts. So that means it would have to be a broadcast. Okay, so that is four. Okay, so this one's going to be a host. Uh, this one will be broadcast. And this one will be a host. Why are there not any? Did I do something wrong on this one? Uh. This one might be a network. Alright, so there, uh, 
a few certain uh, ranges of IPs that are uh, default private. Everything else can be uh, labeled as public. So, uh, IPs that fall under these ranges are going to be uh, default private. So I am just going to go through and mark all the privates, and then I'm going to go back and mark all the pu uh, publics. So anything with a leading 10 is going to be a private. Uh, and that's the only leading 10. Uh, anything where the uh, first octet is one two, uh, 192 and the second octet is 168 is going to be private. So that's going to be the second one. First octet is 192, but the second one is not 168. And the same with this one. And so, uh, anything with, uh, with 172 as the first octet, and anything between, uh, from 16 to 31 is going to be private. So, this one's private, uh, this one's private. And then everything else is public. Um, any number of things can invalidate an IP address uh, from being valid. Uh, one of those factors is going to be is it pri uh, whether it's private or not. If it's private, it's invalid. Um, another thing is uh, whether it is class B or class E. Uh, uh, class D is um, is reserved for multicast uh, IP addresses. Uh, those are the IP addresses that uh, are uh, used to send messages to multiple hosts at the same time. And class E are the is the experimental block. So uh, they're ba that's basically the class used. So if I were let's say Microsoft. And I wanted to test out a new uh, software patch. I would have a bunch of computers with IP addresses <clears throat> that would be in class E, and those would not be communicating with the internet at all. It would be its own separate quasi macro network. Um, it, it's, it's its own quasi internet so that they can test uh, software without exposing anyone to anything potentially harmful. So anything class D or class E would not be a valid host address. So anything uh, with a with the first uh, octet being two two four or greater is not going to be valid. So that's what I'm going to be searching for here, uh, first and foremost. Okay, so uh, so this one is not. Professor wants red. I'm going to give him red. I want to center, so I'm going to center, and this one is not valid, and that's because it's classy. Okay, so the next uh, cause would be if it would be under one of the private uh, IP ranges.
A third reason would be it either falls under a network ID or a broadcast IP. Okay, so, uh, and so I'm going to check for that right now. Uh, this one is slash 24, but it's the last uh, octet is 10, so that's neither. Uh, this one is a slash 24, but the last octet is 255. So that is a broadcast address. <laughs> that means it's not valid for hosts. And the reason is because it's a broadcast address. Okay. Uh, I'm going to check the last one because that's a little bit easier. This is slash 24, and it's and the last octet is an 8, so it's uh, n neither a broadcast nor a network ID. Okay, so let's check this one. Uh, So the uh, network address would be uh, 64.100.255.255.0.0. Uh, but this would be a broadcast address, so. And the rest of them are valid. Why should we continue to study and learn about IP4? Alright, so for this one, uh, I'll study. Uh, we want about uh, IPv4 addressing because we are making a transition over to IPv6. And we are in that weird uh, transition period uh, between the two uh, so that there's still a lot of demand for IPv4 uh, for those companies who either can't afford or won't shell out the money for IPv6 for the time being, uh, but other companies who can and will uh, are selling their IP4 addresses back to the company and getting back uh, and buying IPv6 addresses because there's, and they can do that because there uh, is this tunneling uh, thing that where IPv6 can be uh, uh, tunneled through IPv4. Uh, and still stay intact. It's, it's a weird thing. So, I want to do within a week and save. And, uh, my wife did just get home, so I am going to skedaddle. And I don't care if that's not a word, it's a word now, I just invented it, deal with it, I'm a poet. <laughs> I, I am likely to have 
Uh, I'm likely to be back tomorrow. Probably a little bit earlier in the day, though. And, all right, well, have a good one. And adios. Uh,